We serve an amazing God. We serve a wonderful God. He is a mighty God. He will never lose his power. He will never be dethroned. He is the God of all creation from everlasting to everlasting. And that information about him is true, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of whether you are at the mountaintop, whether you are in the valley, whether you are enjoying life, or whether you are regretting why you were born. God is good all the time. And one thing I want to encourage you to do is to never lose faith in that good God. Anything may go bad. People may be bad. Situations may go wrong. But God will constantly be good. And that's why we praise him every single day. That's why I always come across to you with the word of God, because the word of God is God himself and it will never lose its power. And today, God has granted me the opportunity to share with you another message from the word of God together with the brethren in this place. If you are just watching or listening, I bless God that this word is going to be a blessing to you in Jesus' mighty name. The title of my message is, Do Not Slumber. That is a word of caution, and this is a very timely word for the season we are in. Help me turn to your neighbor and tell them, Do Not Slumber. Do not slumber. Because if you dare slumber, the devil is going to get a hold of you. I want to go to the scriptures in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. When the Bible tells us to be sober, to be vigilant, other versions say, be alert, be awake. Other versions uh, tell us to be serious. Depending on whichever version you're reading, the same word comes across. What the Bible is telling us here, what the word of God is telling us is that you should not slumber. You should be awake. You should be alert. You should be on your guard. You should be paying attention to what is going on. You should be serious. And why is that? Because you have an adversary. Child of God, the first thing you need to understand is that you have an adversary. Help me tell your neighbor, you have an adversary. It is very important for you as a child of God to know that you actually have an adversary, that you have an enemy, because that fashions the way you live your life. There is a reason as to why, for instance, the president of Russia, as we speak, is the most protected president in the whole world, followed by the president of the United States. These presidents are so guarded. The billions they spend on their security is amazing, is staggering. You can wonder why they can protect one single human being who is going to die one day with all that force. But do you know why? Because they know they have great adversaries. And because they know they have adversaries, they live the way they live. They have the kind of security they have because they are aware that the moment this person or this party gets an opportunity to strike at our president, they will not cease to do it. They will do it because they have an opportunity to do so. So, child of God, you need to live with that mentality. You need to live every day knowing that you are on the devil's most wanted list. You need to live every day knowing that the devil is your enemy, you are an enemy to the devil, and there is no reason for you to become friends. You only have to increase on that enmity. So you live every day knowing, I have an adversary. I live like that every single day. I live like I have surveillance over me wherever I go because I now have an adversary who has some monitoring spirits. There are surveillance cameras of my adversary everywhere. So I live in a certain way because I know I have an adversary. And you have to live with that awareness within you, not for you to fear, but for you to be alert. Not for you to be scared all the time, but for you to live a careful life that the Bible is telling us to live. For you to be sober all the time, to be alert all the time. You need to be on your guard because you know you have an enemy. The kind of enemy that's not going to die tomorrow. The kind of enemy that does not sleep. He's always watching something and he wants to do something to your life and to your estate and to everything pertaining to you. So just having that awareness is important. For Peter to tell you you have an adversary, you need to take it in. 
You need to know that, hey, I have an adversary. And that's why there are some fake doctrines coming up these days, doctrines from the pit of hell, that want to show people that the devil is almost non-existent, he's overpowered, and you don't have to mind about him. You don't even need to do spiritual warfare because that devil was finished, was beaten. That message is from the devil himself, though it sounds nice. Why? He wants you to be off your guard so that the next time it attacks you, you don't even know what is attacking you because you... you relegated him to non-existence. You said he does not exist, or he's there, but I mean, he doesn't have anything on me because Jesus overpowered him and is finished. I mean, I'm just living in the finished world, so why do I even have to mind about the devil? That message is from hell. To make you live a life of slumber. To make you doze. To make you put your gun the other side because you don't expect any enemy to attack you. But the Bible tells you you have an adversary and you have to know it. Even Paul knew that he had adversaries. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9. Paul says to the people in the church of Corinth that for a great and effective door has opened to me and there are many adversaries. Now you have to understand that Paul is talking about two things at the same time. First of all, a great and effective door to preach the gospel, to minister the word, has been opened unto him. Now that can only be by God. But at the same time, he testifies and he says, but there are many adversaries. And you have to know that as long as God is at work in your life, it will be the same instance. Whenever God is cooking something, there are going to be adversaries that don't want that to happen. Of course, there are adversaries from this one adversary that you have, the devil himself. You remember in the days of Nehemiah, if you read your Bible, that the moment he began to build the wall, Sanballat and Tobiah had to show up. Because whenever a great and effective door opens up in your life, adversaries are going to show up. And if you are not aware, you are going to have a short-lived success, a short-lived victory. That's why some children of God all of a sudden lose what God has given them. Because they do not realize that the moment you see an open door, you should also be aware there is an adversary lacking to make sure that he comes and captures and destroys what you have just received. So you always have to have that awareness, child of God. You need to be sober and vigilant. I've already given you the, the synonyms to that word. Being sober and vigilant means you have to be serious. It means you have to be alert. You have to be awake. You have to be watchful. You have to be on the lookout. You have to be on your guard. You have to be paying attention. You have to be living a cautious life. And when I talk of a cautious life, I'm not talking about a fear-filled life. Because some people confuse fear with caution. It is good to be careful, but it's not good to be in fear. There is a difference. So you have to be on the lookout. Make sure that you are watching because you know you have an adversary. And you need to know which kind of adversary that you have. The kind of adversary that we are talking about is the master of deception. When we talk about the devil, he is the master of deception. Revelations 12 and verse 9, what does he say? He says, so the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan. I don't know which is the first name and which is the last name, but he's called the devil and Satan. So probably he's Mr. Devil Satan or Mr. Satan Devil, but he's that same guy, your adversary. Who deceives the whole world? It is that he deceives the whole world. This is the master of deception. And that's why when you know that your adversary, your enemy, is the one that can deceive the whole world. I mean, we have seen him deceive the whole world. Even in our day and time, you can wonder how do people all believe one lie? How do they all believe a clear lie? Because the devil is behind that lie and the Bible testifies he has the ability to deceive the whole world. Then what about you as a single individual? So you know you are dealing with an adversary who is the master of deception. He is super skilled when it comes to deception, meaning he can fashion deception in all forms. So you have to be on your guard because the one you are dealing with is one that can deceive the whole world. You can imagine. What about you as an individual? That's why you have to be sober. That's why you cannot slumber. Because you can slumber for a day and he, he gives you one lie and he feeds you one lie and you think it is the truth. 
and destroys your entire life. This uh, adversary we are talking about is a thief. He's a murderer and he's a destroyer. Jesus talked about him in Luke chapter 10. I mean in John, not Luke. In John chapter 10 and verse 10. He talked about him and he said the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. So the adversary you are dealing with, the reason you have to be sober and serious and alert is because he's a thief, first of all. You can just doze off for one month and he steals your husband. You can just doze off for two days and he steals your job because he's a thief and he's your adversary. He doesn't wish anything good for you. You have to be serious watching every bit of your estate and everything God has given you because your adversary is a thief. So you have to watch your, your stuff. You have to watch your property. And he's a killer. He's a murderer. He will never rest, not until he has killed. And that's why you can never be like, devil, leave me alone. You have tortured me enough. He doesn't feel it's enough, not until you are dead. And even when you are dead, he doesn't feel it's enough, not until he has destroyed you utterly. He's one that destroys visions. He destroys dreams. He destroys families. That is the adversary you are dealing with. And that's why it is important for you never to slumber. Because you are dealing with a very cruel, shrewd adversary that will stop at nothing to get you. This adversary we are talking about is the accuser of the brethren. The Bible talks about him in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10. He's the accuser of the brethren. The Bible says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the what? For the accuser of our brethren, and that's the reason he's called Satan, it means the accuser of the brethren, who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. He is the accuser of the brethren. So the moment people come up with fake allegations and false accusations, do not look at the people. You just remember and you say, this is the exact description of my adversary. So that you know exactly who to deal with. Do not deal with the people. They are just in instruments. They are just the face of the attack. But the one that is accusing you falsely is the devil himself, your adversary, who is always looking for a way of getting at you. If you don't know he's the one, you're just going to hate people and be filled with unforgiveness and then be bitter and then he'll beat you the more. Those are his tricks. He's an accuser. Every day will come up with an accusation. And for those of you that are trying your best to be out of trouble for good, I'm telling you, one of these days, the devil will still make sure you're in trouble with a false accusation because he's the devil and he's your adversary. There are some people who cry, I've always tried to avoid trouble. I don't want to tell anybody anything. I've always been the best person here. I come, I sit on my desk, I do nothing to anybody. But still they are saying things. It is not about them. It is the fact that you are a child of God and you have to watch out against your accuser. Your adversary is an accuser. He will always have something to accuse you of. Even if it is just the new shoe you bought or the dress you put on, there will always be an accusation because your adversary, the devil, does not want anything to happen in your life without you feeling guilty, without you feeling condemned, without you feeling accused. So there will always be something. But the question is, do you know who is doing it? You need to know your enemy. That's why you need to know your adversary. Otherwise, you'll always fight the wrong people. You'll always fight the wrong party. This adversary of yours is a tempter. He is always behind the temptations. So when you see a temptation, don't think it's just about what your eyes are seeing, or what your ears are hearing, or what you feel you like. It is the tempter himself. The Bible tells us in Luke 4.2 that he tempted Jesus. And if this tempter tempted Jesus, who do you think you are? If he tempted Jesus, then he can surely tempt you. So when you see a temptation, do not just say, eh, I, uh, that, that, that kagal has beaten me. I can't, I can't you. No, it, it is not the kagal beating you. You have to look beyond the temptation. There is the author of that temptation, and he's your adversary. And he wants you to fall into the trap as you are looking at the kagal, not the one behind the kagal. So you have to make sure that you know how your adversary operates. He's the tempter. 
who has never feared anybody. He tempted Jesus. And if he tempted the son of the living God, then who are you? Help me ask you, help me ask your neighbor, who are you? If he tempted Jesus, then who do you think you are? Hmm? Everybody will be tempted by this devil, this Satan, this adversary of ours. But when you get to understand that the temptations are not coincidences, then you will not just look at the temptation, but you will always be able to look beyond the temptation. You will always be able to know that my adversary is setting a trap for me. Whatever you are seeing that is uh, like gold is, is not actually gold. It is the adversary behind that glittering gold. It is just a coating. But behind there, it is the adversary himself that is trying to tempt you. It is not that man with the money. No, look beyond the man with the money. And when you get to know that the adversary you have is the tempter, you will always address his temptations with a sober mind. You will not have these lousy answers like Job's wife. The tempter came to Job, but the wife was not sober. Job was sober. He replied with a sober mind, and he said, I will not deny God. But the wife was tempted at a time whereby she was in slumber. And his old husband, let's deny God and die. And that's how some people answer to temptations. God, you know I need the money, and this guy is the one that is coming with the money. Now, what should I do? You are answering like one in slumber. Be sober. Do not slumber. Praise the Lord. Amen. This devil that we are talking about is not an adversary you joke around with. As I've just told you, he's not one that is a joker. He's one that is willing to steal, kill, destroy, and destroy everything that it pertains to you. And you know, the Bible talks about him in that verse that we just read in 1 Peter 5, 8, that he moves around like a roaring lion. You know, he tries to be like a lion, first of all, because he knows that the lion is the most feared animal in the jungle. So he does it to instill fear. I want you to understand that devil is not a lion. The devil is not a lion. Help me tell your neighbor, the devil is not a lion. The devil is not a lion. He's not. He, he's just trying to mimic a lion. Because he knows if he comes as a cockroach, he will not be scared. But he's trying to instill fear in you. Because he can only operate within fear, within the confines of fear. Fear is what enables the devil to devour people. But when you're not scared of him, then he will run away. When you're not scared of the devil, the devil is scared of you. So the reason he comes running, trying to run like a lion, eh? that's why the word is as a lion, like a lion. It does not say he comes and is a lion. No, he comes as a lion, like a lion. He's not a lion, but he tries to run ah, ah, so that he can scare somebody. And if you are easily scared, that's when he can easily devour you. But as long as you resist fear, as long as you know that this devil is only masquerading as a lion, but indeed is a small cat, before a big light. You know when a cat is by the wall and there is a light before it, you see a shadow and it's like a big animal by the wall. That is how the devil does it. But he's trying to instill fear. So when you hear the roars of the devil, remember he's not a liar. He's just trying to be something he's not. Trying to puff himself up because he has no self esteem He does not believe in who he is. He has to roar like a lion. Why not roar like the beast you are? You ask him, devil, why are you trying to roar like a lion? You are not one. I know you are some other beast. Get out of here. Amen. And then he will know you are not scared of him. Every time you hear the devil trying to roar through circumstances, through people telling you they are going to fire you, you tell him you are not a liar. You are just trying to roar like one. And I refuse to fear. You need to know that your adversary does not even believe in the beat he has. He has to try to be like somebody else. And you know who he's trying to be like? The other reason he tries to be like a lion is because he knows Jesus is the true lion. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And the devil always tries to mimic whatever Jesus is. He, but the moment you know that the lion of the tribe of Judah lives on the inside of you, when your adversary comes to you trying to roar like a lion, you only ask for the lion of the tribe of Judah to arise in you. And when the real lion roars, the fake lion will disappear in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Your adversary does not even have a permanent address. 
He's always loitering around to look for trouble. That's what the Bible says. He's always roaming around. And that's what he has always done from the Garden of Eden to the times of Job. The Bible tells us in Job 1.7, and the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? All the way in those ages. And what was his answer? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. This guy is that confused. He's always loitering around to create trouble. You don't have to be scared of him that much if you know who he is. And that's why some people think that devil is kind of everywhere all the time. No, it's just that he loiters a lot. He's not omnipresent. When you hear people tell, saying the devil disturbed them in Brazil and the devil attacked them in South Africa and the devil attacked them in Uganda, and you say, eh, but that devil everywhere is disturbing people. No, he keeps loitering. In the morning he's in Kampala. By afternoon he's in New York. By evening he's in Brussels. He's trying to cause trouble here, loitering everywhere, moving to and fro. But he's not everywhere all the time. He's not omnipresent. Hallelujah. Amen. So you don't have to be scared of him like he is a certain kind of God. He is not. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. Tell your neighbor, do not slumber. <laughs> and I want to tell you this as I conclude, child of God, that all you have to mind about is what the Bible says. Your part to play and God is part to play. Now, when it comes to your part, what does the Bible tell us? As long as you are serious and sensitive to the things of the Spirit, to what is happening in the Spirit, no weapon fashioned against you will dare to prosper. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. The only problem comes in when you are not sober, when you are not serious, when you are playing around. You are sleeping for eight hours in the night. And you wake up to pray for five minutes so that you can go out and spend the entire day out in the field for 12 hours. You are in slumber. You are not serious. You are joking with your life. You are dealing with people who wake up at 3 a.m. And they begin calling upon their demons for four hours. And after the four hours, they come to work in the same office like you. And for you, you sleep the whole night. You wake up yawning and just say, ah, the Lord is good. Let me go to work now. You are not serious. And those are the Christians that are beaten all the time. You need to be serious with your prayer life. Say, I will be serious with my prayer life. I, serious. I refuse to slumber. I'm telling you, we are in very evil days. You cannot afford to sleep all the time. You are sleeping day in, you are sleeping day out. You are having six meals seven days a week. You cannot do that. You are in slumber. You need to wake up because if you slumber, the devil is going to come and steal away your gun and use it to shoot you. The devil is going to come and steal away your family. He can only still kill and destroy when he finds you slumbering. He has stolen away some people, killed some that were not meant to die when they died. I don't really believe that some people died when they had to die. Some people were in slumber. And this thief who is a killer, who is a destroyer, found them at their moment of slumber when they were not supposed to be slumbering. And he stole their lives. Just like that. You have to be serious. Those two words, I want, I want you to capture those two words if you don't capture anything. Be serious and be sensitive. Those two words. When the Bible says be sober and vigilant, that's what it means. When it says be alert and be on your watch, that's what it means. You need to be serious and sensitive to what is going on in the spirit realm, child of God. You cannot afford to be lousy. Help me tell your neighbor you cannot afford to be lost. Now we, we are in times and days and seasons where you just can't afford to be lousy. You are giving lousy answers. The devil comes with these temptations and you are there saying, but God, what should I do? It is nice and you know I have always wanted it. Which kind of answers are you giving? You got to be serious. You have to be serious with your life. Let us be very practical here. You have to be principled. Serious people are principled people. If you are to be serious, you are going to be a principled person. You have to be serious with the people you let in in your life. We are talking about your adversary, the devil. And I want to tell you, your adversary uses human beings just like God uses human beings. If he's going to attack you, he's going to use a certain human being. 
So when you are inviting people into your private space, when you are welcoming people into your inner circle, you have to be serious. You don't just smile with everybody and tomorrow they are your friend. <laughs> there you are in slumber. You need to be sober. You need to be sober. You need to be on your watch. You need to be on your watch. See things clearly. Make sure that you are watching and make sure that your gun is in your hand. You need to be serious with your life. You don't just see everybody and tomorrow they are your friend and tomorrow they are in your bedroom and now you have welcomed them and, I, and they ask you, who is that one? She's my new friend. For how long have you known her? Two days now. What's her last name? Ha. I've not yet asked. Those are unserious people. You have to be serious with your life. You have to be serious with the word of God. You have to be serious with your prayer life. You have to be serious with the way you choose the things that you choose and the way you choose the people that you allow to be in your life. You have to make sure that you are serious with your choices. You don't just marry somebody in slumber. And they're asking, yeah, are you serious? And like you're dozing, yes, I think I'm serious. What if it's the wrong choice? Mm, we shall see from there. By the time you wake up, the devil will have destroyed you. You have to be awake. You have to be on your watch. You have to be alert. This is the message for today. This is the message for you this season. Do not slumber. Wake up. Get a hold of the vision God has given you. Make sure that you pray for the people that matter in your life. Do the things that you need to do to keep you awake in Jesus' mighty name. Do not waste your life. One second of sleeping off when you don't have to be dozing off. And this opportunistic adversary of yours just comes and takes over. Be on your guard, child of God. And as long as you are on your guard, I'm telling you, you don't have to be afraid of anything. Because the rest is going to be done by the Lion of Judah himself. He knows the real lions. A fake lion cannot fake it before the real lion. It cannot happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift your hand and, and say in the name of Jesus. Amen. The lion of Judah. Roars on the inside of me. And every fake lion disappears right now. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me pray for you and with you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I give you praise for everybody in this place right now. And for everybody that is watching and listening to this message. I come against the adversary called the devil, called Satan and his lies and his fake stuff and all his fake demons. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come against his attacks right now. We come against the attack of fear. We come against his, his weapons and his strategies and whatever scheme he has been planning against our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Father I pray may you arise O Lion of Judah may you arise O Lion of the tribe of Judah may you roar and let the enemy scatter in your people's lives in the name of Jesus may you roar and let the fake enemy O Rakasata let, they, let him scatter from their places of work let him scatter from their homes let him scatter away from their marriage you adversary, we come against you in the name of he that overcome you, the one that died and rose from the dead, he that is that lion of the tribe of Judah, the only real lion, he overcomes you right now by the power of the living God in the mighty name of Jesus. Put your hands on your head and make this prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for a fresh anointing of discernment, for a fresh grace to be serious regarding the things of God. I don't want to be in slumber. I choose not to slumber. Awaken me, O oh God. Help me be alert. Help me be sober. Help me be serious with my life. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the living God. Thank you, King of glory. I give you praise and I thank you for this message and for your people. 
Now I decree and I declare. No more slumber in Jesus mighty name. Amen. We choose to be alert. We choose to be on our God. Not by might, not by power. But by the spirit of the living God. Those who had left their posts are getting back. Those who had put their guns down are getting them out. Those who had put their Bibles down, they are getting them out. Putting on the whole armor of God. And staying awake in the spirit. And staying alert in the spirit. We declare that we are not to be devoured of the devil. But we devour everything that has been trying to devour us. By the power of the living God. In Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you have been listening or watching this message and would like to reach out to us, I keep reminding you the number is plus two five six seven zero two two three zero two zero one. And you can also reach out on my YouTube channel and make sure you get to feed on the messages on that channel. The word will be a blessing to your life. And if you're not yet born again, I'm telling you, this is not the best time for you not to be born again. Accept Jesus Christ today because he's about to return any time. Just make a simple prayer where you are and tell him, Jesus, I believe you died for me. I am a sinner and I need you to be my savior and I give my life to you and you will be saved. Till next time, may the good Lord bless you. It's Apostle Henry Sabiti. Amen.